this is a few words about my book, In Search of King Solomon's Mines. In my life, there have been a few people who have really inspired me and really affected what I have done, my plans in life. And without doubt, the very top of the inspiration tree was for me Sir Wilfred Thesiger, the great explorer who wrote In Arabian Sands and the Marsh Arabs. And throughout, you know, the 30s and 40s, he lived um, in Arabia and in the marshes in Iraq. And he was doing journeys that people just can't do anymore. These were journeys of incredible, incredible hardship and incredibly um, brave, really, at, at a time when the, the dangers were very, very, very real indeed. And I remember meeting Wilfred one day at his, at his apartment in, uh, in Chelsea on Tite Street. And he was back in, in London for the summer from Kenya where he was living with the, with the pastoral um, Samburu tribe. And I got chatting to him and I said, what should I do? Where should I go? And he said, you must go to the Afar Desert and stay with the Danakil. And I said to him, who are the Danakil? And he said, they are a tribe who castrate any young men and hang their testicles around their necks and wear them with honor and pride. And it sounded like a crazy thing. And I said, where, are the Dan where is the Danakil? Where are, uh, where are the Danakil? Where is the Afar? And he said, Ethiopia. You must go to Ethiopia. It was the land for Wilfred of the time of childhood. Uh, it was the land of his childhood. He had been born in Ethiopia, then Abyssinia, and spent his really his most formative years when he wasn't at boarding school in England, traipsing around the country. And I started thinking about Ethiopia, and I thought, how bizarre that what we know mostly about Ethiopia is about starvation, famine, you know, live aid, all of that. And I thought there must be a, a great expedition with my name on it connected to that country. And what I find happens, you know, with 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 the idea of a quest, you put something in your head, and then gradually it becomes a crossroads. Two or three other overlapping ideas get laid over it. And I had had a huge fascination as a child for King Solomon's Mines, the book, but all by Ryder Haggard, but also my family's obsession with um, locating the gold mines of King Suleiman of Solomon. My father had searched for the mines in uh, the Sudan, and he had uh, he had written about it in his in his travel book, his first book called Destination Mecca. And my grandfather, Sir Iqbal Ali Shah, had searched search for the mines in the 1920s in Yemen. He believed they were there. My father had always cautioned me not to go in search of King Solomon's mines, which seemed like a fantastic reason to look for them. And so, with very little preparation, I bought an aeroplane ticket and I arrived in Addis Ababa, the capital of Ethiopia. And I remember getting to the street in Addis and thinking to myself, oh my God, what the hell am I doing here? How am I going to get to the first base? How am I going to get anywhere near someone who can lead me to King Solomon's Mines. And what I've found really works, or it works for me, is opening my mind and being ready to receive, receive anything, receive clues and pointers. And you know, it started raining, I think it was my second day in Addis, and I rushed to a taxi, and I got chatting to the taxi driver, his name was Samson McConnell. And I said to him, so I'm here in Ethiopia looking for King Solomon's mines. And instead of laughing me out of his cab, he said, what a worthy, wonderful project. I was a gold miner in my youth. And there began my zigzag trail in search of the gold mines of King Solomon.